I am the Sherman Fairchild Distinguished Professor in Digital Humanities, so my position is kind of unusual at Dartmouth because I cross different departments in my teaching and in my research. I do a lot about digital studies, digital creation, the idea of you know, creating digital art, whether it be interactive art or creating art from computer games, or this kind of stuff. I also run, uh, teach a game design workshop where we have students making games, uh, a lot of times with the social conscious issues or health issues involved, so that they're making games for a purpose or making games that kind of transcend just the idea of play, but work towards thinking about um, ways that games are actually interaction machines or behavior machines and then can be adapted to everyday life. I think one, one of the greatest things uh, that I found working at Dartmouth is that the students are really interested in interdisciplinary work and so are the faculty. So even though people are in a film department or computer science department, Often their interests span more than one thing, and, and the students are this way as well. The students who are attracted to come here may be opera singers on the football team who are majoring in physics. <laughs> and those are the kind of people who come here. They're very well-rounded and eccentric kind of people, and uh, I say this in a good way, that people who are willing to pursue their passion. So you, you have a lot of people with a lot of different skill sets thinking about ways that you can innovate. It's really hard to innovate within one discipline without an outside perspective. And Dartmouth's really well poised to be that place for innovation because we have so much mixing between you know, music department and computer science and film and media and, um, you know, and uh, the environmental studies. So this is a place that that happens. It's the scale of the campus. It's the passion of the faculty and the students. It's a very, a very unique blend of those people coming together. It's really about the people. We have good buildings and stuff too, but the, the, the people really make this place uh, buzz. I hope Dartmouth shakes things up. I hope, that we <laughs> I hope that we really try things that haven't been done in other schools. I, I've often thought, wow, what if I have my seminar of eight people and then I, um, we're just having, we're broadcasting this conversation. Like what happens when the, when, the, when the private conversation becomes public? What happens when we have series of conversations and projects and they perhaps replace the traditional lecture style classroom of, of the future? Education is a flexible machine. It, it doesn't have to be done in one way. And I think that it's r really exciting, especially for the day-to-day -day operations. You know, we, we have short terms, 10 weeks, and we can, you know, go in and, and, and kind of shift what happens. So, for example, my students will read an article and we'll have a discussion. And I'm like, well, let's Skype the author in right now and just talk to them about your questions. And that breaking that boundary, these are artificial boundaries between, you know, what's, what's, what happens in a classroom, what happens in the world. In my case, you know, creating games, affecting culture, um, doing, doing stuff about public health outreach. Right now I have a, a public health game that's been getting a lot of press. Um, we, we have a game about uh, helping archives. It's an open source project where archives are being augmented and I've got people coming from around the world to learn about our, our, the work that my students are actually physically and mentally involved in. You know, they're, they're really actively engaged in these projects that have real world outcomes. And so that's, I think people can feel that and they really want to be a part of it. And I think the Classroom of the Future is going to really focus on those kinds of themes where we're actively engaging in things, we're meeting real people in the world, we're critically problem solving, we're, we're having to look at our own assumption, we're having to understand how we think to approach the problem and how someone else's thinking might complement ours.